Welcome to an introduction to accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. In this podcast we are going to show you the basics of carrying out a bank reconciliation. The purpose of a bank reconciliation is to agree the entries to two accounts, and in the case of a bank reconciliation, it agrees the entries in the nominal ledger bank account or the nominal ledger cash account to the bank entries that will appear on the bank statement. There are usually differences. It's really that the bank statement and the amount in the ledger account actually agree. And there are reasons for differences, and these are not necessarily due to errors. They, these are some of the reasons for it. First of all, there are items which are going to be entered by the bank, such as charges and interest, and the business is not going to know what these are until they receive a statement. And secondly, there may be items such as direct debits and standing orders that have gone through the bank, but still don't show on the business's accounts. And there are entries which will not correspond because of what are called timing differences, However, even after all of these, the entries still need to be checked to see if there are any errors. If we look first of all at the charges and interest payments, a bank may add charges, so much per check, or if it's a savings account, there may be interest payments. Now the use of online banking does mean that that information is available more easily now and also once the details are received then they should be entered into the accounts for the business. There are also standing orders and direct debits and so with a manual accounting system then details have to be entered from the bank statements or from some other records for processing. If it's a computerized accounting program then it's possible that standing orders and direct debits have already entered uh, to the system because they would have been set up as recurring entries. These days checks are becoming fewer and fewer and more and more payments and receipts are by way of debit and credit cards. And so the need to be uh, able to check bank statements becomes more important. However, if you're using some accounting software, then any e-payments that you make, any electronic payments, are processed from the system and sent direct to the banking system. And you can actually alter the date of payment before you send them out. Bax payments can also be sent directly from desktop software, and employees are often paid through this method. The charges from banks are usually less where e-payments are used and that of course makes reconciliation somewhat easier. Timing differences can come about as a result of unpresented checks. When a business writes its check and sends them to the suppliers then the usual procedure will be that the check is put in an envelope and put in the post. So at, on that date the entry is made to the business's accounting system. On the other hand the supplier waiting to receive it may have to wait a day or so before the post comes. And even if the check is then taken to the supplier's bank and paid in straight away the check may take one or two days to clear before it appears as an entry on the bank statement. So those sort of differences are referred to as timing differences. In other words, it won't be uncommon for you to find that not all of the checks that you have written out will show on the bank statement. You can also have timing differences which are referred to as uncleared lodgements. In other words, when you make payments into the bank, they may have been deposited in a night safe, and at that point, of course, they will have already have been entered into the accounts for the business, but they won't appear in the bank records. You have to wait until the next working day for the bank before it's likely that they're going to be entered into the bank records. So we tend to use this term uncleared lodgements or alternatively deposits in transit which describe this particular situation. It doesn't mean to say you shouldn't, shouldn't still check for errors. The most common errors are likely to be the omission of a transaction on the accounting system 
or in the accounting ledgers if you're still using manual accounting and this is called a miscasting you may also find a transposition error every now and again for example if 67 has been entered instead of 76 pounds less frequently you will find errors by the banks recording a transaction when the first bank trans uh, reconciliation is carried out, very often there is a question about debits and credits. In other words, why is it that my accounts always show debits when I pay something in, but the bank shows the entry the other way around? The answer is very simple. A deposit of a thousand is made to your bank account. You debit your cash account for the business because you've got an asset of a thousand pounds. The bank, on the other hand, has to record a credit of £1,000 because they've got a liability to you for this amount. So the bank statement reflects the bank's position and your cash account reflects your own position. In order to confuse that, particularly for personal checking, you find that bank statements will often use the terms paid in and paid out to help avoid that sort of confusion. So there you are, you can see your view is that you have a debit of a thousand pounds because you put cash in, you receive a check which is worth 250, so you record that as a debit as well. You pay an electricity bill, so you record that as a credit because that's money going out. The bank, of course, is going to take the opposite view, so the thousand uh, pounds paid in and the 250 pounds check paid in are referred to as credits and the £60 paid out to the electricity company becomes a debit. The easiest way now to go about a reconciliation is to remember to do it in a series of steps. First of all, enter any interest paid by the bank and any charges made by the bank. Secondly, enter any direct debit standing orders, back payments and receipts on the bank statement to the accounts in the cash book, after confirming of course that they are correct. And the third one is to tick all matching items on the bank statement and the ledger bank account or cash account. And then you should be ready to write a reconciliation statement. So, we're now ready to look at the timing differences. List the unpresented checks, total those checks, list any uncleared lodgements, total those lodgements. And here's how your bank reconciliation should be then set out. Set down the balance on the bank statement. You add any outstanding lodgements. You subtract any unpresented checks. And you'll get an answer. And that should now equal the balance on the cash account in the ledger. So we'll look at that. Here we have a cash account for a business set out and a bank statement that they've received. So, step one is to look for the interest or other charges on the statement which are not in the cash book. And when we identify those, we can see ah, a bank charge of £10. So, I add the bank charge. So, I've recorded that now in the cash account for the business. Second step, look for the direct debit standing orders and any other transactions, debit cards, etc. on the bank statement but not in the cash book. And as you can see, I've found three. A standing order paid out to Dombey. A bank loan, £100 paid out. And a direct debit, which was a payment in of £300. So, two payments out and one payment in. They have to be entered now to the cash account for the business. And you can see that we've done that here. So we now should have all the things on the bank statements that needed to be entered to the cash account for the business. And if so, I need to tick or mark the matching items. Normally you would tick them off, which is what I've done here. I've actually shaded in for all the matching items. So you can see everything matches except for two things on the cash account for the business and they are both payments which were made payments for rates and payment for a water bill for 180 and for 78 pounds so those are two unpresented checks there are no outstanding lodgements there were no other queries so we are now in a position to set out the bank reconciliation 
So here we are. Our balance on the bank statement is 5780. Those two unpresented checks with 258, so I subtract those, get an answer of 5522. The balance on the cash account was 5522. So those two figures now agree. That means that I've successfully carried out the bank reconciliation. When you present a bank reconciliation report, make sure that it does have the date that it was completed stated very clearly on it. That ends our podcast on a bank reconciliation brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We hope you are successful in your studies. If you want more information on Parkbench Tutors, look us up on the internet or look for Parkbench Tutors on Facebook. Thank you.